There's a little bit of a pushback uh, now all of a sudden from progressives uh, against this idea that the only way to go is to uh, cut the budget, cut spending, and uh, that the Republicans are uh, clearly uh, right that that's the current uh, plan and that that's the only plan that we can consider. And there's a great number of people who are uh, pushing back on that. Robert Reich uh, is one of them, of course, a former Secretary of Labor for uh, Clinton. Uh, but he went and talked to a bunch of people in Washington to see if that was actually the prevailing idea, and the answer was definitively yes. Uh, they said that the idea of tr actually trying to create jobs, to spend money, government money, to create jobs, was, quote, dead in the water. And he's quoting uh, people that work in Washington here, uh, influential people, but he's, it's anonymous, right? So idea of creating jobs, dead in the water. Uh, someone else said, are you kidding? It's all about budget deficit, budget deficit, budget deficit. Nobody's thinking about any, anything else. And the quotes go on and on. He's got nearly a dozen quotes here. Okay, uh, But he says it's a bad idea, of course. Uh, that's not surprising. But now a great number of other people are coming out, which are a little surprising. First of all, Robert Kuttner, another progressive uh, at the American Prospect, great article about how, hey, you know what? If the president wants to get reelected, what might make sense is focusing on jobs. I can't believe they can't see that, right? Uh, point number three, Jared Bernstein on the war path. Now, he used to be the top guy for uh, Joe Biden. Uh, he was Joe Biden's budget man, as, as Bush would say. Uh, and when he was at the White House, you know, he supported the usual, you know, White House rhetoric. Now that he's out of the White House, he's like, what are we doing, man? He's like, this is crazy. We should be trying to create jobs. What are we doing trying to cut spending in an economically disastrous time? It's funny, anybody who leaves the White House, just give them a, a little bit of time, not long, two months will do it. They come back around and they're like, whoa, what were we thinking? This is a terrible idea. Christina Romer, same thing. Uh, very influential uh, position inside the White House, gets out of the White House. Now, she was one of the good guys to begin with. She was trying to push internally from the White House. She lost. Uh, but now she's getting tougher and tougher on some of her criticism. Um, she said the administration and Congress should have done more in the fall of 2009 and early 2010 to aid the recovery. Uh, Jared Bernstein writes, it's hard not to feel like we're stuck in a bad place and there's nothing we can do about it. And of course, remember, like I said, economic uh, policy advisor to Vice President Biden and Romer was uh, the chair of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. Very important positions. But I say all that in a prelude to Larry Summers coming out and writing an editorial about spending cuts are not the right way to go. Now, ultimately, I disagree with his proposal. Now, remember Larry Summers, the reason I'm surprised by that, was one of the most conservative people inside the White House, right? And he's the guy who wanted to deregulate the banks in the first place. He's the guy who's been consistently wrong on that. He's one of the guys that led to that economic collapse. When Obama hired him, it was maddening, right? Uh, now, ultimately, his proposal is, let's lower payroll taxes for employers, which is a conservative idea and endangers Social Security, and I got no interest in it. But as he gets to that idea, he lays out, he's like, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. The whole point of uh, cutting spending and balancing budgets is to create confidence in the, for the market to, so that we can have low interest rates. He's like, but we already have historically low interest rates. So that's not our issue at all now. Our issue is that we need to spend so we can create jobs so that those people have money to spend in the market. Which is, by the way, exceedingly obvious. Anyone who studied economics knows that. But even Summers saying it is a good sign that the tide is turning a tiny incy bit. It's going to be way too little, way too late. Don't get me wrong. Now that is all of a prelude to the Washington Post article on Tim Geithner. They explain all these guys. Okay. And I'm, I'm putting this together now, right? So you've got the righteous of the world, you've got the progressives, you've got former uh, White House advisors, Romer, Bernstein, that, even Larry Summers, etc. All these guys are going to lose because there's only one guy that Obama listens to and a guy still at the White House after all these people have left, Tim Geithner. And, you know, the man crush continues. The article, first of all, paints, uh, I think, Geithner in a heroic light in 18 different ways. His, they, in the beginning of the article, uh, and Zachary Goldfarb wrote it, and it's got good information on it, don't get me wrong, it's not, it's not a bad article, it's a very informative article in, in, in a lot of ways. But in the beginning of the article, he quotes Geithner's teenage daughter, 
Dad, why are you so misunderstood? When you save the global economy, why can't people understand how awesome you are? Okay, yeah, spare me. And uh, at one point, Geithner gets in a little bit of trouble because he says something he shouldn't have said back in 2009, uh, which was not uh, the talking points for the Obama administration. When this was brought to the attention of the president, the president who has a man crush on Geithner says, oh, I'd have said the same thing. But if you say that, then that's going to have consequences. Doesn't matter. Geithner must be protecting Geithner's laws. So Geithner has more power than all these other people combined. And so what is he using it for? Well, Goldfarb's article explains, and that's why it's an interesting and, and good article in a lot of ways. Uh, Tim Geithner, 100% on board for and pushing for internally and winning on cutting spending. He thinks deficits are the number one issue. As the article explains, he was a Republican. He was never a Democrat. He switched to independent at some point, I guess, whenever it became politically expedient. But he believes in the idea, the conservative idea, that even in tough economic times, even when you have 9% unemployment, it doesn't matter. Cut spending. And where are you going to cut spending from? Well, of course, you're going to cut it from programs that help the middle class and the poor. Well, you can't touch the rich. That would upset the markets. Geithner doesn't want to upset the markets. And if you cut spending on the middle class, well, that gives the markets confidence. And the markets feel better about that. And what is Tim Geithner here to do to serve the market? Okay. In reality, of course, it, it doesn't help the real market at all. That's why we have the 9% unemployment. That's why we're in very tough economic times. It helps the Wall Street executives who are you know, benefiting from this and who are use Tim Geithner as a tool. Now, I don't know if Tim Geithner is in on it and somehow, somehow one day looks to get paid on it. It's also possible that he's exceedingly stupid and he's being used as a tool by the bankers. He doesn't even realize it. He's bought into this ideology of, well, the free market is always right. And whatever the markets need and want, they have to have it. They say to him, hey, listen, wait a minute. The idea that the market will self-correct you were in the middle of the bailouts in 2008 and the catastrophe, the global economic meltdown you were warning us about in, as it was happening. Not that he warned us before, of course not. Before he was like, bleh, 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 bleh. oh my God, the markets melted down? I didn't see that coming. And in the middle though, he came out and said, I need trillions to give to the banks. Because we're melting down, this is going to be the worst collapse you've ever seen in your life. Well, did the free market work then, Timmy? That's why I say it's possible he is exceedingly stupid. That having gone through that, that he still thinks, no, uh, free markets will regulate themselves. All we have to do is cut spending on the middle class and the poor and make sure that the companies and the banks have enough money, and if we direct enough money to them, that'll work. I have basically said this before, but let me just make it exceedingly clear. President Obama's first term will be a failure. And it's because of Tim Geithner. 